I'm feeling very unmotivated and I'm the first child and need to take care of the family. What do I do? Okay, so... What up, people? It's your favorite podcast, man. Back again with another one. My name is Michael Shonariwo. And I'm Mara Wagonkoya. And this is Menisms, ladies and gentlemen. We back again. New season on here. You see, we started off with a hot episode. You saw we had some lovely guests. Shout out to Miss Bamie and Tools again for joining us last week. We appreciate you. And shout out to you guys that also tuned in. We appreciate you. We back with another one. How you feeling, G? How's everything going? Feeling good. Feeling good. Not feeling... Feeling good. I mean, I'm, I'm, uh, I think I'm doing everything I can to be in high spirits. Everything. But uh, yeah, I, I feel, I feel all right. I feel oh, all right. Good, good. I mean, it's good to be back. I'll be, yes, you know, back with another season, you know, yeah. getting ready for Dirty December. We have a month, a month, we're a month away before the December activities. How are you feeling, man? To be honest, I'm not looking forward to it. Why? I feel like every year we forget how much traffic. I mean, that how one is, much is normal. It's normal. Ah! Normal. Uh, normal. No, no, I mean, I th- for, for me, I think living as a Lagosian is probably your worst time of the year if you're not trying to participate in any yeah, of the if festivities. If you're somebody that's a resident, that you yeah, if you yeah. live in Lagos, it's a crazy time because things you're normally used to, say, for example, you're going out grocery shopping, it will now be twice as long the queue. Like, you know, things like it's it's just it's a messy time, but it's also a fun time. So, you mm-hmm. know, it's, it's good to look forward to because it's the one time in the year that families are trying to get together. All the people that you have outside the country, you're all trying to reunite, you know. So it's 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 nice times, right? I just hate the stress that comes with it, but I love I love mm-hmm. December as a whole. I'm looking December. forward to you know it's a busy period. You know we got some special things coming out that you guys would see by now. You know Sunday last year is back, so I mean that's one. Of thing course I'm you're happy. <laughs> of course I'm, I'm happy. Like yeah, that's the one thing I'm looking forward to. Sunday last year is back, so we're going to be on the beach all December. So all of you guys around the world, if you're coming to Lagos, I'll be seeing you this December. You already be seeing the content that's out now. But I mean, the thing is, because we're older now, also I think that's why we also don't enjoy Daddy December as much because yeah, yeah, for, the for sure. demograph of people that are going out religiously get younger and younger. In fact. My dirtiest December, I think, was in 2018. That was the last time I did. 2018, 2019. That was the last time I did like a, like a proper filthy December. Hmm. But after then, that's lit. Kind of hung that's my early. Boot. That's late now. Yeah. So, so I mean, that's thing, early. Sorry, should I say? Yeah. That? So, so the thing is, I started my dirty December started when like the dirty December culture started. This was before. This was when it was still like you within Lagos. You know, you guys will have fun within Lagos. It was really the people come from outside for dirty december it was so dirty december culture from people outside the country started in 2021 after covid Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. think about it Mm -hmm. 2020 is december if you're talking i get what you're talking about in terms of it seems from a social media standpoint but yeah people are I mean. coming but i feel no, like people have always been coming. i feel like it's been since uni that we've been no people have always been coming there's always been like this december is a nice time that's december but i mean the social media that is december now didn't start properly to like i mean because the reason i'm just very in between with that is because i don't me personally i get what you're saying because things like tiktok and all that even me i was one of the main people pushing it like no, okay, i let, always let tell me, people let me like you, nobody let me, can let me give you a good example now if you go on social media now, there are literally pages dedicated I know. to letting so you what, know what to do for a I'm not disagreeing. December. That's what I'm saying. I'm not disagreeing because even yeah. from that COVID period time, yeah. I know it was from TikTok and all that. And that's why I said I know I was one of those people that was pushing it the most. Yeah. But the reason I also disagree to an extent is because even before that time, I feel like there were it was just that everybody that knew of Dirty December knew. It's just that's that... That's what I'm saying. It's just that it wasn't glamorized the way it is now. So and that's, that's exactly why I say it's because I tell people my best Dirty Decembers were before COVID. I still do Dirty exactly. December, but that's what, it was think still... About, think about the... I said 2018, 2019. COVID but, was but the funny, But that's what I was saying. Like, I was saying the difference was, you know how you were saying, like, obviously, if you're among here and all, you know, then I was still one of those ones flying back. So oh, I, fair enough. So fair you see what I said to me? Okay. It was still dirty December because I used to be flying in right, with you used to be the all my people before. that are flying in. So to us, now, dirty December. Fair enough. It's fair even, enough. funny enough, it was after COVID that I was now a lookout that is like, dirty December, is, I'm looking at it from, I'm already so, here. Yeah. So, and that's, to me, that's when I, my own energy and that kind of started like dimming a little mm. bit because I had done it when it didn't come with, you must spend three hours in traffic before you get to this club. So it was still more about the activities. And that, that day December, I was going out. When I tell you, I was doing... So I think about December is, as a local is that you're still working on. 
before like the mm. main core, I'll say between 18th and like 25th. 15th. No, no, I'm saying I'm saying when you can take a break from work. Oh, okay. okay between well. 18th and like 25th is when you give or take. But between from the 12th, December's already getting lit. Mm. So from the 12th, you're working. So I was working. I would wake up in the morning, go to work, finish work at five, six. From there, and I was in a Death December group. From there, we're already talking, okay, everybody's doing pre-drinks. We're going to this place for pre-drinks. From work, I'm going straight to pre-drinks. Pre-drinks, we do pre-drinks till like what? 11 30, 12. From there, we're going to club. From club, I'll come back home around 4 35. Wake up again at 7. Go to work. I was doing this back to back from the 13th to I think the 29th. When I tell you my December was it was no. when I was done. <laughs> no, me, mine, mine was when I was club. A, I don't want to when I was it. an IJGB. I was out every day, obviously. That one religiously every day. Then when I moved back, to be fair, my first day of December after COVID was definitely lit because that's when I started Sunday last year. So obviously I was out for work, but I was out partying. And that's when I used to work in the club. So it was still work, but fun. Right. The next year, same thing. That 2022, same thing. But I started getting a bit fatigued a bit but i was like that's fair but you see that last year dirty december that was probably one of the worst ones i've had Mm. because the work didn't allow me to enjoy at all and then i said this year that's why it's like now we're starting we've been low-key working behind the scenes all month because i've told myself i want to be so organized that i actually enjoy it and when i say enjoy it it's not that i'm in the clubs yeah 24 7 in control of your time i have free time like if i want to see my friends we can plan it if i want to go somewhere different i can't plan it yeah. what i hate is they removed landmark and all these places now because december is the one time i love going to the beach outside of ilashe but to now go to the beach elegushi now is going to imagine the traffic yeah. there yeah. but then to go to ilashe now it's still going to cost so we'll see how it goes this year Sha, if you're shall come in Sha, just come and book your ticket with sunday last year i beg <laughs> let, let help boys this year but we'll still make sure you also enjoy. that reminds me we do have a special event coming up in December, but you guys be on the lookout, okay? There's True. something. Medicine's doing a little something, True. so Surprise. we'll let you guys know. New Axe deodorant. Bust order and smell irresistible. Hey, how you doing, baby? You look mighty fine, I figured I might... All right, so let's read some of the questions, comments yeah, we've so gotten from y'all. Yeah, so today we have just one question, which is from Mayawa's babe. Hmm, don't let Mayawa's your babe catch you. Anyways. This says, I'm feeling very unmotivated and I'm the first child and need to take care of the family. What do I do? Okay, so honestly, this is not a question that just has one straight answer, right? In my opinion. Wait, I'm confused. What's the question? So the question is, I'm feeling very unmotivated and I'm the first child and need to take care of the family. What do I do? Oh, that's the question. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's, not a, it's not exactly a straightforward one answer question. Because, I mean, context is still define how you can navigate this. Because the qu- one question is, why are you the one taking care of the family? Maybe, you know, maybe your parents are not alive anymore or they're just maybe <laughs> retired or you just, you know, they're financially, you're the one that has taken care of the Maybe because you're the first exposed person. I don't know. Whatever the context is. What I will say, though, is regardless of the responsibility you have, the first thing is you even need to be alive to fulfill that responsibility. So one thing is take a step back, figure out why you're unmotivated. It could be that you're not actually, you're not able to do something. You can find a balance between liking and, you know, having to work hard for. Because, you know, I, I can say as well that, oh, find something you love and just do it. No, I mean, life doesn't always give us that luxury all the time, right? Mm-hmm. You kind of have to do the hard stuff first before you now break into doing what you like and creating a balance. So what I'm even saying is, Find something that you can kind of tolerate that is, okay, you know, you you can still do this work. It's a little stressful. You'd rather not be doing it, but it's able to kind of cover up for whatever expenses you're able to, you know, you have incurred. Now, this still comes back to me saying, find out why you're motivated, unmotivated. It could be several things. It could be that, you know, um, work is harder to find now. Or even whilst, like I just said, whilst you found something, it's not even giving you any kind of fulfillment. Well, the truth is, Unfortunately for life and adulthood, you kind of have to swallow the hard pill, which is 
the work won't always come conveniently, but you just have to do it to get it done. Uh, unfortunately, I'm say advice. Um, repeat the question one more time because you were so. Which is, uh, she's short. unmotivated, but she's the first child and she has to take care of the family. What well, does she do? I'll say it's obviously respect to you because that's not an easy burden. Oh yeah, of course. To have because again, it depends on your background, your family situation, yep. financial status. So, I mean, for somebody to just be a child or just be somebody a that adult. be a young adult that you're not a parent and you're having to take on the responsibilities like a parent is not easy so respect to you um i think the motivation should be a self-motivation where you have to just ask yourself what do you want for yourself what's the family life you want what's the life you want because a lot of us don't tend to forget especially when we get stressed with life that we create our realities. Mm. So, of course, there are those situations where sometimes life deals you cards that are not fair in terms of maybe the way the family you are born in, yeah. the situation you are born in might not be like others that you look at that you'd be like, from afar, you're like, I wish I had their life. But then mm-hmm. the thing about life is you don't know somebody's life fully until you're in it. Like some of these people you're looking from afar saying, I wish I had their life. You don't know the trauma, the exactly. wahala the they go through in their the family. Life that they're living. And to some people, they may want your life even, you know. So I think the motivation should really come from yourself whereby things are not looking how they're supposed to right now. I don't know. Maybe things are well. But if they're not looking how they're, look, they're looking right now, know that. By God's grace, this life is a long life. Your situation can change if you stay motivated and if you stay focused and not just focus on the current problem, but focus on what you want for the future. That's it. Well, you heard it straight from the horse's mouth. Um, So, yeah, I mean, obviously we pretty much said similar things. And um, and I'm saying this too as a fellow firstborn. We're both firstborns. We're both born, firstborns, so exactly. I feel like so, it's a case like I'm not just saying it from a hypothetical way. I'm saying it like from even me myself. Feel, like yeah. my case isn't the same whereby I have to now be looking after my brothers right now. Like I'm blessed that, you know, family's in a position that my brothers can be taken care of and anything I do is a bonus. But then there's some people, like they say, they're relying on you as the sibling to yeah. do everything. And that pressure, I've not been blessed. I've not had to have that pressure, which I thank God for. But in the back of my head, there's still that pressure whereby I want to be great to make sure I can take care of them that the family don't got to do it, you know. So I'm going to keep pushing every day. Like I said, it gets better by God's grace. It gets better. Yeah, it does. It does. It's a... Uh... It's a very, it's a very tough, it's a very tough journey as a first child, to be honest. Um, but yeah, we really wish you the best of luck, and hopefully things. Will so, work. what's today's, what's today's topic? So, first of all, shout out to the guys at the Axe Family. Uh, this episode is sponsored by them. Shout um, out to you, people. Shout out to you guys. Make sure you're smelling good. Yeah, Make sure please. Look, we keep saying look it. Look good, smell good. Smelling good is part of a guy's identity. It's not something you can compromise on. Okay, it's not. It's not, I mean, you, you need to smell good. You need to smell irresistible. And this is it right here. Okay, guys? All right. So um, the guys from the Axe family have actually given us a bit of what they would like us to talk about today. And today they want us to talk about confidence hacks for young African adults in their 20s. So when well, What's it, helped us in our 20s? So when they say confidence hacks now, it's just like things that make you feel... I guess secure. I don't want to just say confident because it's confidence, but things that make you, if we're breaking it down, things that make you feel secure, things that make you feel motivated, things mm-hmm. that make you feel positive. Yep. Just good. So, um, I'll say for African males is understanding. First thing I'll say is understand. We'll go back and forth. We'll say one, explain it, say one, explain it. So my first one is going to be knowing yourself. And when I say know yourself is, A lot of African men, especially us Nigerian guys now, I don't know what's been up with our culture, is that we're so scared to be ourselves at times. And if you notice in Nigeria, a lot of times when somebody is themselves, it's like they stick out. Mm. It's like, ah, you're not like everybody. You, you stick out. And it has its pros and cons. It has its pros whereby it makes you stand out. And if you know how to leverage off that, then yeah, yeah, it's a positive. But it's a negative because you're literally being yourself to you being normal but to everybody they want to blow it out of proportion because you're not doing what everybody's doing doing, but that's where the confidence comes from where if you're not worried about the social norms if you're not worried about what everybody says about you fuck them be yourself and there's a certain confidence you have that nobody can take from you um i know for me that's one thing that's made me go far and i've had to go through that journey where 
even as it's very easy to say be yourself you do have those periods you do question yourself because we're all human beings sometimes you want to be part of the group you want to be part of the community but when you're being yourself you feel like you're not but at the same time being yourself will draw the community you're looking for will attract the people you're looking for so i'll say the first step is knowing yourself right so i think for me um in my 20s one thing that i i it's kind of similar to knowing yourself but a little in a slightly different direction this has more to do with um i'm trying to look for the words to frame this now okay so this has more to do with having a skill but understanding that you're actually good at that right so owning that you're good at something let me give you an example say in my 20s what i can do is draw right but you see there's a lot of self-doubts that may come with accepting that i'm a good artist because there are other better artists or there are other good artists in mm -hmm. different kinds of art around the world so what i got to find out that i would do to myself is i would actually every day tell myself you're really good at this every day just tell myself you're really good at this it could be anything it could even be down to cooking you're really good at this. Like, you know, just what that does for me is I kind of want to be a slightly better version of myself than yesterday, mm. you know? And so, but it started by telling myself I'm already good at it. So if I started off with the journey as already feeling defeated, then it almost feels like there's no journey to continue because I'm like, I'm already not good at this. Let me just give up. There are better people. Mm. As opposed to, you're really good at this. Of course, it helps when you hear from other people, but you can't always rely on hearing it from other people. So I always had to grow the culture of reminding myself that this little skill I have, I'm good at it. Because it's, and it's also not something that's easy. That's why I said it's linked to knowing yourself, right? So say, for example, me personally now, when it came to sports, I was really good at playing football, right? There are better players, of course. There are even people who are on a professional level that I would watch on TV every day and say, I'm not even anywhere near that. But I'd always tell myself, you're really good at this football thing. And so with that, I find that even when I'm on the pitch, and I'm sure you can relate to this when it comes to playing sports, you just feel that, nope, nobody's trying, nobody can catch me. Because you've already it's, told yourself that I'm already, I'm the self, fastest here. So I'm going to say like, our points relate, but yours is more detailed. Exactly, that's In what terms I'm of, I'll call it self-confidence. Because yeah. there's knowing yourself and self-confidence. Yeah. They're similar, but two different things. The self-confidence you're talking about is like, it's self-motivation. Like, nobody needs to tell you when to do something, how to do it. Is exactly. You believe in yourself. Exactly. And knowing yourself is still sort of related to, one, your morals. Yes. Knowing yourself yes. in terms of your background, but then also knowing yourself that you're confident enough to make decisions that you don't like, second guess. Yeah. So, I okay. do like that point you yeah. just made up about, so like, self-confidence. Yeah. And, and, and I feel like a lot of... And I say this because... It's, it's so important and key as you're growing up because these are the things that actually form confidence. And the thing is, you're going to meet a lot of people that try to break Push, your confidence. That's where I was getting at with because that. Because I've exactly. noticed, like, with that self-confidence now, it's something that attracts a lot of people, but sometimes it pushes, a, not even sometimes, it pushes a lot of people the wrong way, especially yep. in a place like Nigeria. Yep. Like in Nigeria, I don't know what it is about us now. When you see somebody that's so self-confident, you try to test you know, like, that self-confidence. Calm down. Should we say hey, you're good? Are yeah, you really see. about that? Oh, let's see. Oh, everybody tries to doubt you because even that thing you said about relating like for me like same thing as you I've been an athlete my whole life where mm -hmm. physically if you look at me it's like okay you're of decent size but I'm not like the biggest or not but yet yeah. I play basketball with all the six foot plus niggas mm -hmm. I played American football with the best of them but it's a self confidence I've told myself like I know what my skill is in these sports that you can't exactly. beat me. You can't, exactly. And I repeat those things to myself, like, you can't beat me. And as I show it, there's that confidence. And even outside of sports, even work, like, I know for our industries too, our industries are, they're always looking for who's the best one or who's the yep. most recommended one. Yep. And when you're doing industries like that, you obviously have to have a self-confidence to stand out, not just from the work itself, but also the way you carry yourself, that when these people call you into these meetings and all, it's like I was watching a podcast um, this past week with Obama on it, and he was like, you already have to present yourself like you belong. So it's like when you go to these meeting rooms and you're meeting all these big people, some people even that you may have idolized from afar, you're like, oh, I've been wanting to work with them for so far. There's a confidence you need to have, like, I'm meant to be here. Not that I'm idolizing you. Exactly. And also, you really have to have that self, to your point now, it's like that self-confidence yeah. is so key. Yeah. So, I mean, what would you say? 
Um, another thing is, is that... um, I mean, I should said this first, but I would say trust God in everything you do or put God in everything you do because when you don't put God in your plans, it seems like those plans are working. But then there's a point that those plans are going to reveal itself that it wasn't really meant for you. Mm. And, you know, like when you put God in your plans, even if you want something your way, sometimes God may not allow it the way you want it. But the way he's going to let it manifest itself, it's going to be even bigger than you thought because it's his plans. Mm. So I realized there are a lot of things I used to do based off self in terms of, to me, this is how I want it. To me, it's a good idea. But it wasn't with God's plan. And that means I had to work 10 times harder instead of just working maybe a little easier. Right. A little t- a little tweak could have fixed everything. But I went the longer routes because I want to do it my way. Mm. If I had trusted God in a lot of things, it's not to say I didn't trust him in some things because the things I trusted God on, like that, or even if the process seemed long, mm. the, be- the, the outcome... outcome outweighed anything i could imagine but the things i tried to do by myself now it was always ah ah ah. so i'll say putting god in your plans for everything is a key thing it's, that definitely helps your confidence yeah what about you um one other thing i'll say is key to you know at least help me out as well was appearance right now appearance cuts across a large spectra of things and what i mean by that is Every time you talk about appearance, the first thing people think is clothes, mm. right? But it, even something as, as, what I say in quote, minute as getting your ideal haircut. And what I what I mean by that is, you just know you you know within your twenties you're kind of jumping between haircuts. You want to know like which you're is, trying different styles. Yeah, exactly, stuff like that, you're yeah. trying to figure out which is really your thing. Then you get that one. There's just there's always that one that you know. The first time it wasn't quite sitting well, but you look you look at it, it was okay, yeah, it's okay. Yeah, yeah. And then second, third day, you're like, oh nah, this is my look, this is it, this is the one, right? Yeah, so every like... day you don't get that look. You're like, mm, I look all right, but it's not that one. So, you know, identifying that that was your thing and honing it and just making it part of your identity creates that confidence because now you didn't really need someone else to tell you you look good. Mm. You just know that haircut is my magic, you know. Just oh, I'm looking. Just hold on. Let me go and cut my hair first. I'm coming back. You, which is why you'd find that guys cut their hair when there's a major event going on, or guys would cut their hair when they're trying to do a photo shoot. You know, it's just it's something to help you build the confidence that you know you look good. You don't need the second person to tell you that you do right. And so you know, finding the right kind of haircut. It, like I said, it seems like it's a small detail. No, it's a but big finding detail. the for right me, kind of haircut, for example. For me, I found like I tell people like that. I, that at least ask like. For me, when I was in uni, that was like the first time I was alone. Obviously, secondary school, boarding school. But uni, when I went to England, I remember like when my mom dropped me off in hall, the first thing I wanted to go and do was look for a barber. Mm. And I remember I went all around the city looking for it. And everybody would tell me, there's only one black barber, only one black barber. So I went to go meet him and shout out to him in hall. I forgot his name. Uh, Moses. Moses Barber in hall. Like he was the only black barber. I went to go literally from that day. I said, I'm going to build a relationship with this man. Mm. Because you are basically in charge of my confidence. Because <laughs> exactly. if I get exactly. a bad haircut, I'm fucked. Exactly. There you if go. I get a good haircut, it's on it's you. Good, yeah. So the way I used to do was when we started, when I saw he was good. Mm-hmm. the hustler and me just used to say oh no this 10 pounds per haircut because you know now it's 20 pounds a haircut but then yeah. 10 pounds was still 10 was it, so yeah. i was like i had to figure it to get free haircuts you know so i used to just tell them like hey bro if i bring a whole bunch of black dudes here will you give me free haircuts he's like yes we bring it um oh, every week i'll be bringing niggas 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 then eventually he has to be giving me free haircuts yeah. but every time you give me those haircuts like there's a confidence, there's a confidence. i had there's see something. there can be no money in my account exactly but you but just the know fact that i have that haircut <laughs> some things are going to manifest themselves yep. to me somehow some way yeah. so you're right yeah uh, so and, and that also like translates to other things like even your fashion style because again i was talking about appearance you know mm. even your fashion style now the reason why i talk about this appearance thing is that like you mentioned other things that give you confidence may be lacking in that moment but when you have these other things in place keeps you afloat keeps you in check keeps you in fact it keeps you more motivated to get the other things in place right mm. if your style for example is one thing that you have to kind of you know discover you have to you know it still comes back to knowing yourself in some 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 uh aspect of it 
when you've kind of figured out because even i feel like even up until like your mid to late 30s you're still kind of jumping in between styles because what whatever style was working for you in your early 20s mm. you're kind of trying to come off that and move on to something else you know but at every stage your style is boosting your confidence it's mm. growing that confidence in you and you know one thing you need to be careful of is that it's not what is popular that you're calling your style because one day when that thing is not popular when you always have to mind shift. normal you always have to mind shift and say, Oh, you are still wearing that. That's now old, you know. So, but when you, when in fact, when people see that, regardless of trend, you're choosing to go with this, it becomes your identity, yeah. And they see it as, Ah, yeah, he always looks good. Do you understand? It might not be the the textbook look good, but they know that you found that style, it works for you, and you just go with it and you look nice and clean. When you do that, and eh, you feel this, you feel this confidence when you walk into a room. When you have a meeting with someone, if you're going on a date, mm. you know you're not you're not even worried that this date might think I'm not dressed well. That's one thing you just know. Yeah, if it's when it comes to appearance, I know how to take care of myself. Same thing with making sure you smell nice. You know those those little things over time actually boost your confidence to the point that even when the things that a typical man needs to boost confidence, like money, are lacking, those things are, are there to keep you in check. Yeah. Because a, a man who's tied everything to money for confidence. The day there's no money, let's say for example you are tying your your expensive clothes to your confidence. Then when money has finished, then it means there's no expensive clothes again. Uh-huh. It means you're back to square one. So you know. So I would say that things like that, no, but things that have to do with your identity, that have to do with you know who you are as a person and how you translate that to the to your look, are things that boost confidence for me. All right. So another one, that's four. I'll say two more. Okay. So another one I would say is. Fail a lot early, mm. so you have a lot more confidence moving forward. So I feel like your twenties so experience basically. I feel like your twenties are the year for trying everything, and a lot of people are always scared to try, especially young people. And I don't know why, because it's like you're worried about what people will say about you. You're worried about the perception. You're worried about the actual feeling of failing. But the thing is, by God's grace, we all have a long life ahead of us. So the whole point is for you to try it and fail early yeah. so you don't make those same mistakes, mistakes later. And yeah. I, I know for me personally, I have tried. And this, the funny thing is, as I'm saying this, there's still so much I've not tried. But there's so much I tried between my 20s, whether it was work experiences, travel experiences, business. And as I said, I still haven't done everything. Mm -hmm. But I tried so many things that is uh, giving me more of a peace of mind now in my 30s that I know the things I like, I don't like. And even the things I still want to try, there's some things I'm open-minded to because of the things I've experienced or tried in my 20s. Then there's some things I know I don't need to do because of the experiences I've seen or tried in my 20s. So... I think everybody needs to actually open up their minds when they're young because that's this is the one time we have the most time. You know, when you're married, when you have kids and all that, there's no time again, no. especially when you have kids. There's no time because your time is dedicated to your kids. But as you're young, single right now, even if you're dating, use this time to experiment and try every little thing because you yourself don't know what you like. None of us do. It's when you're in your 50s or 60s and even then something can change. But at least in this young age, don't set yourself in a corner now that is like, is this way or nothing? Open your mind up, try things. And even when you fail, don't see failure as a bad thing. Failure are lessons. L's are lessons. That's what people need to understand. L's are lessons. Those lessons you're learning, how are you taking those lessons and bettering yourself? I'm so grateful for all the lessons I've learned in my 20s because now in my 30s, by the grace of God also, because it still it takes wisdom to apply those lessons and apply it in your life. But I know the lessons I've learned in my 20s, boy, that's why I have a different kind of confidence now in my 30s that yeah. gives me more peace of mind. Fair enough. I mean, so one one other thing I would say um, helped me boost confidence is knowledge. Gaining knowledge, in even in the general knowledge things, you know, just knowing kind of a bit of everything and reading up on stuff that, so say for example, you're specialized in something, but you're not just knowing it, you're actually knowing it to the detail that, you know, when people need help or something, they, they kind of know you are the person to call to ask for this information. You know, this kind of puts you in a place where you you feel you feel like you are relevant, mm. right? And that, 
that that feeling of relevance actually gives you so much confidence, right? I'll, I'll give an example. Let's say, just think about it now. Let's say you're, you're in a car, group of four guys, right? You guys are in a car, you're going out to the club. Then the car just, something happens, the car just breaks down, mm-hmm. right? On the road. And then four of you are just trying to figure out what's going on. And then you who's there, and this actually kind of ties to the whole experience things while you grow thing, right? <laughs> uh, why I say that is, is because a lot of times when something bad happens or there's someone that can fix that problem for you a lot of us don't actually see what they're doing kind of learn from that experience like, mm-hmm. you know you kind of just leave it to the professional and just let him do his thing as opposed to the other person who is intrigued and is curious to know how it's being done we kind of look and be like oh, okay so i see so this time he kind of opened that stuff first before mm-hmm. he even did anything else that's to keep yourself in knowledge right so in the situation where you guys are four guys now the car is broken down this experience you had before where you gain that knowledge by watching somebody else do it, now you can just... And mm-hmm. it's coming to you naturally. It's not because you're trying to show off, right? It's because you've just equipped yourself with that knowledge now. So when you get there, you're like, oh, no, no, guys, calm down. So the first thing we need to do is not panic. First thing we need to do is we need to wind the windows down and then um, open up the bonnet, allow the car cool down mm-hmm. for a few... So see that now. In that entire moment, you've become that reliable person, mm-hmm. right? And it's only because of the knowledge you've put in t- into yourself. It could even be from reading stuff it could even be from making sure you watch videos about these things it could even be from you know just sitting in the same room with people who are talking about this often especially with the intention to gain knowledge Mm. that is i want to watch these videos because it's my thing i just watch this in my spare time i have a friend who he's into um sanitary wares toilets stuff like that but what he's intrigued by is law and so he reads up on American law, British law, just just, just in his spare time, just reads up about it, gains information. If you hear this guy talk, even me when I'm, I'm just like, ah, ah, how do you know so much? So now I feel like if I want to gain information or get something, he's the person I'll call Fair. to be like, oh, do you have an idea about this? He might not even have the idea, but just knowing that he's the one to call would definitely give him some kind of confidence that I don't have. Do you understand? So gaining and vice versa there's so many aspects of what i know and do that he may not have any idea of but i've made sure to gain knowledge on that and so that knowledge makes me feel like yeah i'm relevant so that's that feeling of relevance is what yeah. will come with gaining knowledge and all i think, right. that's, very all cool. right. I think that's good at least we're giving you guys some advice was there any second part to that question um yeah no 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 so i think we hold on <clears throat> I um i think there was one part that said um so of course they did detail, you know, um, talking about, okay, well, there was an aspect of it that talked about finding your career and earning an income. Let me talk a little about this because I know that this is something I also struggled with in my 20s, right? When you, and maybe we can even touch on that a little bit. You see that stage when you're done with uni and it's almost like the world is your oyster, which is how they tell us, right? You know, you get to a point where you actually have no idea how to navigate, what next to do, right? The only reference you have is either your older cousins and how they did things, your parents and how they did things, and what to go to. Next. So you're thinking well, now. Not necessarily. How you? How do you mean? I mean, depends. I'll say obviously the cliche thing is that. Yes. But yeah. then for some people now, like you, you especially if you went to uni, you especially did. if you went to uni, it's sort of there's again. I'm not saying it's wrong, but there's some people in that uni experience. You sort of know this is what I'm going to try and start doing. Because right. I know for me, once I finished uni now, I already knew I wanted to be in the entertainment space Good. in some way. How did I want to do it? I didn't know. But I knew already from the things I'd been doing before, which was throwing parties, <laughs> throwing mm-hmm. events. Mm-hmm. Okay, I already have a um foot in the door whereby I already do something like this. Mm. To your point... Because I already know what I want to do and I've started doing it. Exactly. Like I could ask questions, but for me, that was I would say it was a mistake, but it wasn't a mistake too, because when I started throwing parties, I started throwing parties in my undergrad. So I used to throw all the parties in my university from second year to fourth year. So I'd started mastering that. Now it was time to take it up another level whereby I'm not in university anymore. Mm-hmm. I'm in the city of London. So the competition is more, there's more avenues, things like Mm -hmm. that. And even with that, you still ask questions to get the information. But for me, it's like I took the experience I had and said, let me try it out in a new environment. Mm -hmm. And to the grace of God, it worked out. 
And that's when I knew yeah. I wanted to do something. Now, where I had to come to my family and all is when I finished my master's and I was starting my business in London, I had to move to Nigeria based off immigration and finishing. I'm American. Right. But <laughs> obviously, you know, a student visa has finished. So it's either move to America, start a new life, or come to Nigeria, do NYC, and start from there. Right. Coming to Nigeria, I went the parent route. Well, I'll try and talk to my aunties and uncles. All of them said the same thing. Hey, you go and work for this multinational now. You go and work for this company. Hey, no, exactly. your uncle works for here. Go and do this. And I first listened to them, and I did. I worked for FIRS when I first came to Nigeria. Okay. And when I worked for FIRS, those six months to me were the worst six months ever. However, they taught those six months also were very, actually, I lied, the year. Because the first job I actually did wasn't FIRS. It was actually I like it was FIRS at first for the first five months. Okay. Then the next six months I worked for um sorry, for the next four months. Sorry about the timing, y'all. It's just I've, I'm trying to remember. So five months was FIRS. The next four months were with AFA. So I used to work for this company called AFA Sports. Okay. They basically are like one of the first Nigerian made sports brands. Okay. So they used to also sponsor the national team. So right, they do sponsor right, right. national teams. So I actually so I even worked on the projects with the women's national basketball team where I did their marketing and everything, okay. right? Okay. So those were based off talking to family, doing the cliche nine to five route. But then there was an inner peace I did not have. There was an inner happiness I didn't have where I wasn't happy about where I was. I wasn't as confident because it's like, yeah, I'm confident in what I do. But these jobs are not jobs I'm doing because I want to yeah, do them. Yeah, it's because my family has recommended it to me. You get what I'm saying? So now it's like, I have to ask myself, bro, what do you want to do for yourself that you've tried or you can try that will be a success? When you're asking that question of navigating life after uni. That's where I started learning where... Okay, you can't listen to advice, but you have to also make some decisions for yourself and trust God when doing it. So I remember I just told God one day, God, I want to do my own stuff, you know, like do my own parties. And to the grace of God, I quit my job. I remember like when I worked at Alpha Sports, like I had what, four months of NYC left. The girl that worked there, shout out to you because she's jackpot to Canada. But oh. she signed all my letters for the next four or five months that I didn't have to go to work again. Right. So quit my job, started my entertainment company, and that's how EMG blew up. And the rest is history. That's how I'm here right now. So Okay. I mean, and I, I think, again, this still comes back to your points, which earlier was that um, you have to try things and fail and make mistakes and stuff like that. So, so I guess you were able to navigates easier because you already started trying things before uni ended right yeah so i'm now talking about the typical person who's just in uni because it's uni just go through school i mean yeah maybe you have one or two experience but you know not everybody is going to school with uh, trying new things as they go in uni uni is just you go to school and then while you're there you make friends you network and stuff like that but that's pretty much it everybody's so, you know the, the average thing is you're coming out with that degree in the hopes to apply for jobs trying to get stuff mm-hmm. like that so this is now covering the context of that scenario, which is coming out of uni, you have no idea where to go. There. You're just going to start applying for jobs, start applying for this, right? Now, in my case, I think what really helped me, again, and this still comes back to trying things out. So I think the real thing is make sure to actually always try something outside of what you're doing currently as a side thing, even if it fails, right? Because what helped me was I was already doing summer jobs, the summer jobs were still in the field I was studying, but mm-hmm. what, what was different was that I didn't, I could just be on break for summer. Like, you know, I didn't have to do those jobs. But for me, I always wanted to learn things. And to me, the only way to learn it was through the people who are already professionals and practicing it. So I would always ask my dad, okay, who does he know here? Who does he know there? I want to work summer at this place, work summer at that place. Because I wanted to know what it looked like on the field. So I would know if it's even something I like when I'm done. Mm. You know, so I see different work environments and see how they are and just know that before I finish, I have an idea of what it is I'm trying to get into and if it's something I think I want to do or change something else entirely. Mm. So I did some other jobs like for the entire four years. Every summer I would always work at different companies, different this, you know. So getting new experiences, learning new skills, learning new applications, technology, stuff like that. So by the time I was done, I kind of already knew, okay, yeah, I actually do want to do this architecture thing. I think I want to actually go into this, right? And of course, that would still come with new experiences, but Mm -hmm. it helped. I was confident enough in the direction I was going in. Of course, with God's guidance as well, but I was confident in knowing that I've already tried this. 
it worked a little for me and I think I want to go in that direction. So this is to say that you definitely need to try things. It's, it's very important because even with my fashion line, it started from, okay, people already know that I dress, right? But I feel like this can be more. Okay, like what, mm. what can I actually do with this? It's the same way people would know that you like to throw parties, but it's like maybe on a smaller scale. You're like, okay, what, what can I do with this? Like people a lot of see people, me it's as... A, it's funny like you say that because even like... Let's look at Sunday at Ilache, for example, now. Yeah. A lot of people think I just started doing beach parties like two, three years ago. Yeah. But yeah, they wouldn't exactly. know that I've been throwing beach parties now long... since I was 21. Like right. my first beach parties. And that's why I said a lot of, and that's another advice I'm going to give to people. Like when you're trying these things, don't think that the end results have to be the biggest thing that everybody sees. Because when I started doing beach parties in Lagos at 21 now, I used to my beach parties used to be like 20 people. Then from 20 people, 30 people, mm. 30 people. Four. I remember the first time we did 50 people at an EMG beach party. Bro, I want, I want Chris. <laughs> Everybody too at that time was like, ah, I'm not in our circles and all that you get. Like, yeah. you brought 50 people to the beach. Oh, shit. Like, that's the biggest thing. And to me, it was like, I still remember that feeling. Like, and that's even the feeling that made me want to try again new again, things. But I remember, yeah. like, when it was 50 people, I'm like, oh my God, I've done it. I've made it. Then again, you try, you try. And as you're trying, you open, it's like you sort of op test your limits every time you try something. And that's what some people need to realize. Like, as you're trying something, you already had one limit you made before, right? I'm sure you can say the same thing with your clothing business. As, as you got your first sale, you say, okay, can I get five sales? I've gotten five sales. Can yeah. I get 10? I've gotten 10 sales. So it's like, that's... And then what, do you want to work with somebody influential that has a little more... Uh -huh. Aha. So it's like, like that, you see, yeah. I said, it's still just trial and error, trial and error, which a lot of people, especially in Africa, are afraid of. So... Whoever is out there, see, fuck everybody. Eh? Because the thing about Africans especially, Africans will not support you when you are starting. It's only the real ones. But you see when you blew. <laughs> you see when you blew. There's no person that's going to be not hitting up your phone. Man or woman. So remember that. So how would you say, how would you say working out, like this physical workouts, right? Going to the gym and stuff. How would you say that has impacted your confidence or just you know the journey to confidence as an african man well i think well for me it's like i played i've played sports my whole life so i tell people sports is what probably gave me the foundation of confidence i have because i've played organized sports since i was six okay like as far as like mom registers you for a team yeah. mm -hmm. and all that stuff i played since i was six and to be honest, it was really around my teenage years that that confidence got built because when you're a teenager trying to try out for teams and stuff like that, that's when the egos... I always joke and say your egos really hit in your teenage years when it comes to sports and all that because that's when you know if you can make it mm, because I agree there's the you. level of your 20s when you get in a certain area, but by that point now you would know if you can last with certain people. Like, yeah. I remember, like, when I was a teenager, you would face some dudes, like, you'd be like, what the hell? And it would make you question if you can do this. Then, obviously, as you get older, too, you can get questioned the same way. But if you have that experience from the trials and errors that we're talking about, that mm -hmm. you've been through this before, you know it's the same thing, just on a different level. Yeah. So, s sports and working out helped me. Because even in uni now, like, I know I had so much confidence being like, I was the only freshman in my uni now that was on the first team for basketball, for American football. Mm. And in those seasons, both teams went undefeated. Bro, that confidence is what set me up for a hold the whole four years. Oh, wow. Because the fact that I was the only first year that's from Nigeria, you're on the basketball team, first mm. team, you're on the American, and you're now one of the guys that's actually starting and contributing. My whole four years was set. Because from that, I'm like, right. if I can do this in first year, none of you niggas can fuck with me now for the first, next four years. And the same thing is like when I would also play football, for example. Yeah. I wasn't the best footballer at first. Funny enough, nobody would believe me. I used to be a striker when I was younger. Interesting. <laughs> no, because things I'm fast. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. The so funny you, thing, you could use that. I actually used to play soccer at first. Then what happened? I got in trouble in America that with my mom 
that she didn't let me play soccer again. So when she didn't let me play soccer that whole summer, that's when I picked up American football and basketball. Um, I didn't look back because all the Americans played it. It was yeah, only the Africans that I played. Yeah. So it's like when I came to Nigeria too, I remember like one thing that really tested my confidence when I would play soccer with guys and guys wouldn't let me play at first. So I'll be on the bench because like, hey, Yankee guy, you can't play now. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, I right, bet my niggas. Like, we're going to see about this. Oh my and God. then when I'll play, it's like, you have to just be working, 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 working. And that's another thing about confidence people don't like to say too. You have to be ready to put the work in if you're ready to, if you want to be confident mm. in anything you do. I mean, tell me if I'm lying. In yeah, Whether yeah, it's course. sports, whether it's your profession, you have to be willing to put the work in to be so confident because preparation is key to everything. Once yep. prepared, once you're mentally aware of everything, once you're put in the fire of that situation, there's nothing that can... You know, this is this is kind of fascinating because just like you as well, I've grown up having like a sports based, you know, background. My dad played tennis. In fact, I started playing organized sports at three four. Mm -hmm. So and actually at three. So my first actual sports was swimming. I even saw him like on a professional level at some point, right? And so I was doing swimming and tennis between the ages of three, four, five. And so I was already introduced to that life of sports at that age, right? So when it, when it got to, so in my primary school, I was in the gymnastics club. So I would do high jump, long jump. And I was also like one of the shorter guys as well, right? So, but you know, you see a short guy, you're like, Which, how are you going to jump that? So I was always, I was a shorter guy, but I was coming like first, second highest jumper in the whole of the school. So these were things that would already boost my confidence from young, right? <clears throat> now, going into high school, was when like the other sports like football, basketball, volleyball will start coming into play. And that's when you're kind of like still judging, okay, I'm which one am I good? Am I good at any of these things? You know, but again, because I was already coming from a sporty background, right? I already had the intention to try something and just if I, if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. And then I got to realize that I could play all the sports. And if you put me in the badminton, I'm already very good at that because I already play lawn tennis. If you put me, so football was the one that you know then football, especially in Nigeria, football is the one that everybody wants to know if you can play or not because that's like the globally accepted, sorry, the nationally accepted sports. Mm -hmm. And so I had never really played football before high school, and so I didn't really know. I was still discovering my skills, what I was good at, all that stuff. And then before I knew it, I think after my after like the third year of when I was in like my GS3, GS2, GS3, I started realizing that, oh, I'm actually good at this sport. You know, you'd go for training. Then they would actually draft me into the school team, you know. So, so over time, things like that would help me build this confidence that certain things, especially when I'm even on the field, I already know that because I was also very fast. I already know that, yeah, as soon as I get the ball, you can't catch me. That kind of thing. And, you know, so it still comes back to the earlier point I made about telling yourself stuff earlier, giving yourself that self-motivation, that self-boost, you know, actually hones the skills that you're hiding inside. Because when you already tell yourself, I'm very good at this, and then you actually start executing, you start saying, you know, you, you wouldn't be shocked by your results. You're like, mm. oh, okay, I'm actually good at this. I'm actually good at what I do. So I'll say that that ended up like trickling out into working out, going to the gym, stuff like that, because you're already a sporty person, right? You know, so you just add that in. And I think going to the gym, rather than even just the physical appearance it gives you when you're done also helps with the kind of strength training you're building. You know, it kind of makes you feel like, I'll give an example now, if you're going to go into a fight, you almost feel like you're strong enough to be with, to get to whoever, because you've had that build of strength over uh, time. I'll say, me, is opposite. Mine's experience. Like, me, it's not gym that helped me out of no, fight. I've, no, no, I'm, I'm not even saying that gym <laughs> Once you helps get you your that. ass whooped the first time, you fear <laughs> nothing. Me, no, it's true. I Don't tell people, like, I, like me, now I'm not the biggest guy and all that, mm -hmm. but I can fight just because I've actually been in fights. I've got my ass whooped mm -hmm. in America. And it's like, whoop that you have cried. But exactly. it's like, but the thing is, I, I thank God for those. I still remember the nigga's name, Chris. This guy was a lot bigger than me and older. Beat, fucked me up. But Ooh, guess what? Goodness. From that day, there's nobody I feared again. Because now, if you try and fight me, I already know what it feels like to be hit. Like, you see, in a fight, a lot of guys don't realize you you might be strong, you might have skill, but have you ever been hit before? A lot of guys haven't been hit. So you see what I say? It's like sort of that confidence and experience whereby it's like, now that I've been hit, let's see if you're ready to be hit. Fair, well, <laughs> fair enough. 
I mean, I haven't gone into a lot of fights. I'm not really big on fighting because... No, I'm not... A, by the way, I'm not a fighter, <laughs> by the way. Byron. I'm just saying, you play... When you play sports professionally for a while, you are going to meet some individuals and your oh, teammates. Yeah, and you're going to naturally. have teammates too. Naturally. I naturally. mean, in fact, if I, if I felt... I'll tell you before you say, I actually go, oh, what's going to fight with one of my teammates? Shout out to him though. I, I have a lot of love for him recent because... You know this flag football league we play mm-hmm. in now in um, Lekida. Yeah. So to me, to me that's recreational. Mm-hmm. But you know them, they take it heavily. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. And so me, I'm like, I played play real me. football already. Like me, my time has gone. This is fitness <laughs> for me. Or me, I'm 30 plus. You yeah. understand? So one of the teammates now, he was like, we unfortunately my team we've lost the last four. Right. Before we were undefeated though. Then I went to London. I came back. We lost three in a row when I was gone. Oh wow! So as soon as I came back, I'm like, "Yo, guys, yo, let's get this motivation going. We're, we're gonna get started and all that shit." So I'm all, that's how we lost again. You know? One of my teammates just kept spazzing on everybody. You know those teammates that just like him too. He's been fucking up, but he's spazzing right. on everybody. So I tried to talk to him like, "Yo, bro, what's going? You've been spazzing on everybody. And you know, it's until it's your turn that happens now." Yep. So it hasn't happened to me yet too. But I'm like, "Why are you spazzing on everybody?" My own turn comes. The guy just spazzes on me. I beg, I don't want to talk to everybody. Get out of my face. Eh? So after that first one, everybody was like, ah, how far now? So I'm like, bro, calm down. Let's talk. So when I was talking to him, he got up and tried to like walk past me. Mm. So as he tried to walk past me, I just stepped to the left of him like, hey, bro, like, let's not do that. Like, let's talk man to man. You understand? But mind you, I'm by the door because I'm blocking the door. Mm-hmm. So at that point now, he pushes me. Right. Like, you know, like that push, like, you push out of the way and I yeah. stumbled. Um, uh, I went out of yeah, character. Like, I went out of character on? for the first time in a while. Though. Um, uh, from there, I just grabbed his shirt like this. And the guy is a gym bro. Like those, just started shoving him to the wall, pushed him to the wall. And then Yankee came out. Yo, you're alive. Don't you motherfuck it. Uh, um, uh, me too. I was shocked. I'm like, he's still there. <laughs> like, like, don't you have your motherfucking life touch with my nigga. Don't you? Eh? <laughs> oh, my days. I said, my, you what? Know, it was so bad. Once that happened, like our teammates broke it up. Like my teammates are holding me. I'm going crazy. But when I got home, I just sat down and I was just looking at myself in the mirror. I right. was like 32 years old. <laughs> you let somebody go out your character. Oh Agbaya. I don't know. I had to talk to myself and say Agbaya. But guess what? Preparation was made me ready. Right. Because right, when right. you've been in the fight before, you fear nobody. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I mean, I, see, I fully, I fully agree with it. It's not, you know, and I think it's still it's still part of the experiencing things, like you said, you know. You take you take information from what you've experienced and mm. you kind of use that and gain. That's why I say be that. and the thing is a lot of people are shy to try experiences, especially in Nigeria. I don't like I talk to some friends, it's like, have you tried this? No, no, I can't try it. Why can't you try it? Yeah, I just can't. What the fuck does that mean? You know, you know, so I think one thing we need to learn is that Nigeria has kind of put lots of people in a small box. <laughs> yes, we have we, people are privileged enough to think outside the box and try new things, try and be different. Remember we spoke in a, in a separate episode where, you know, being different in Nigeria kind of calls... In fact, it was even in this episode. This Being different in Nigeria kind of calls for the wrong kind of attention. No, but it doesn't... But that's the problem. Uh, people need to start asking themselves honest questions. What I've been doing so far... Is it actually wrong? Is it working for me? Yeah. Is it benefit... Am I happy with my life right now? If you know you're not happy with your life right now, then it just means that you need to try some new shit in your life. That's it! Nobody's going to make you happy. Like, nobody... Like, I had to sit down and really look at it. Bro, people outside that you're worried about too, they don't give a fuck about you. They really don't. Like, that's... The the people that fuck with you, those are the biggest blessings. That's how I see it. People that fuck with you for who you are are the biggest blessings. But at the end of the day, those people are not the ones paying your bills. They're not putting food on your table. They're not the ones that are going to even care about you if you die today because they're going to move on to life. So why are you limiting your life for people you're not going to be chilling with. See, honestly, yeah. See, it's so Nigeria does this thing where it puts you in this place where you without the approval of the next person, you feel like you're not doing enough. Right. And when you grow up in a society like that, there's a way it affects you. You you in fact you have to unlearn that. I was to about to say you have to just unlearn yeah. it. Yeah. So I'll say that someone like me now, I had to unlearn that. Because you know, you mentioned this earlier. You said they won't they won't support you yet, but when they see that you are blowing, ah, you know, I mean, wait, wait, what are we going for? Con- pe- content creation is one of them, right? You look at content creation, and in the eye of the average Nigerian, it's like, oh, this, you are just playing with your phone. You are just you think you, just, you think you have time for this? You, know, you should be for your mates are doctors and lawyers. That's the that's the that's the eye of the typical Nigerian when they look at content creating, or at least maybe before. I'm sure maybe now they've gotten a little more awareness. Now, 
the people who kept going regardless of those comments regardless of is this one real work is this one do they had to keep going by shedding off that previous experience of this is what's expected of me you have to kind of you know remove that first skin layer because that first skin layer that is already inbuilt on you by being nigerian and being raised in nigeria is already the first hurdle to wanting to be yourself wanting to actually be able to express yourself be able to you know confidently say okay this is what i'm good at this is what i do you have to first remove that before you can actually proceed so one thing and that's that comes back to the point the first point you made about knowing yourself right mm. knowing yourself will come with knowing that look see all of a you're saying i know the vision i'm trying to get to. i'm not even going to say i'm not even saying that it's guaranteed to work but i'm saying that this is the vision i'm trying to have for myself I'll, just leave me let me do what i need to do if it fails i know it has failed i know i've tried it i move on and i take my mistakes i learn from them and i move on to the next thing but every nigerian is still in that hey so the people even africa as a whole so you tell me if i do this now so people will now know that i failed it People will not, they will now start telling me that, hey, we told you. So you see what I'm saying? There's, there's a lot of unlearning you have I feel to like do. everybody should just aim to be a trendsetter. Like, don't follow the trends. Aim to be a trendsetter. Because when you aim to be a trendsetter, like, there's no expectations on you. It's like, you're just doing what you like. And if people fuck with it, they follow. It's like, you just, even this content creation idea you said, I keep saying it. Like, I say it to myself, I don't care who agrees, who doesn't agree. You see this TikTok thing, yeah? I know I influenced, whether people want to tell me or not, I influenced a lot of people to start using TikTok properly. Because when I first started doing it, remember, okay, we didn't know each other then. Yeah, we didn't. But we met like a year after I started, before we started doing, yeah. my, when you came to Sunday last year, the yeah. first one I did. 2021. Uh-huh. Before that, remember I started during COVID. And yes. even that, I was one of the guys from Lagos. Like, you know, people thought I was from London, but it's like, this is a Lagos guy. Mm. Nobody was using it then. And trust me, I know how many family members and people at first were messaging, ah, should I these are your videos? Ah, interesting, I know. Years later, look at every... Bro, there's people that are doing way more content than me now. Yep. Even like, even me now, I can't even keep up with a lot of these you young know, niggas that are yeah. like, bah, 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 bah. But I know that initial start. I know how many people used to look at me funny. I know how many girls used to look at me funny. That's a funny one. Because you see how every girl is using TikTok now. If you know insults. <laughs> insults. But in no. the back of my head, there was a vision that I saw for myself. Even something little as this podcast now. Same thing we said before. When we started, you know, there was exactly. a lot of reservation of, oh, man, with mics or no. But there's a vision you have to... That's why I say you have to be ready to be a trendsetter that once you start it, people, there's a yeah. point people are now look at everybody. Like, oh, you guys are the only guys. We fuck with your guys. Oh, with the other guys. Oh, we're trying to start a podcast now. Eh. You okay, know, bet, I, I think this bet, is really a good bet. way for us to like kind of like wrap up this topic, which is talk about how this has actually helped our confidence going Whoa. forward just the podcasting starting up the podcast and how because it's, it's definitely helped my confidence in a lot of ways i was never a camera person and you you never were camera you know, cam- you, know yeah. you hated cameras never <laughs> in front of cameras you would never find me there like it's, it's very barely like i mean yeah i would like to take pictures because i was a fashion guy you get so it's kind of you kind of you kind of need to like mm. pictures right but just being in front of the camera, just talking. I'm like, what's what going like? Like, nah, you, I would never be that kind of person, right? But this definitely helped. I mean, it's still building my confidence as I go, but it definitely helped me build my confidence in, you know, engaging people because we've mm. had a ton of guests having to speak to people with different perspectives on things, having to speak to people on, you know, just generally different backgrounds, right? And it's definitely helped me with how I interact with people. It's definitely helped me with how sensitive I am with, you know, talking with people, engaging them in different conversations, you know, even something to do with um, having to loop people into your reality or having to understand people's reality that is, and that is different from yours, you know, it, it's just really puts a lot of perspective on that. And, you know, it's given me this, you know, new confidence that, yeah, I can actually walk into a room and talk to anybody in a way that they know that mm. I'm, you know, speaking a lot of it. And I say this because, don't forget, we started as the guys that nobody would want to listen to because we are men with mics, in quotes, right? And so when you know that you are actually one of the few people that people want to listen to. There's a, there's a bit of confidence in that because it means that people believe that you have something interesting or important that they are willing to listen to. So, you know, it's definitely something that I feel, and this comes back to what? Trying something new, trying something, you know, against the odds of what people might say and all that stuff. So, yeah, I think it's a, I think it's, um, 
really important that there. I mean, in all of these things we've said, there's so much to take home from uh, it. And just I'll know say the way this has helped my company. Thing is, I already had been doing content and all that beforehand. Um, I'd done podcasts before, uh, but f- tried and failed. I made a podcast during my masters that was speak your mind. Shout out to everybody in Love Bro that used to listen to it. I made a podcast in Hall called the AU Show. So I knew there was a stage that I was going to get to that it'll click. So that's why I said for me it was a trial and error. Well, I've already had that trial and error of trying and mm-hmm. failed. Um, before the podcast, I'd already been doing TikToks and like the story time shit. Okay. So it was like the confidence probably was like, okay, I already talk about my stories on one platform that goes viral. Yeah. But okay, now I'm going to a new platform, which is YouTube. Let's see how that goes. Okay, it worked. Um, speaking my mind, to be honest, I've always been like that with people already. I think the confidence just comes from... Because for me, I already travel a lot around the world with my events knowing that I can just sit down one place and people around the world are listening even more. Because TikTok, I, I, it's weird. Like, TikTok is one demographic. Like, TikTok to me is, like, blown, blown. But what I noticed now, especially in these last few years as I travel more, is the way people hear the, the like, in-depth conversations of menisms. Because I say TikTok, my story tends to share more comedy, but real shit. Okay. But, like, menisms is more, like, the mindset, the mentality, the moral background of the individual that you can sort of decipher a bit more with the in-depth conversations we had. So that confidence has gotten up where people are starting to see the real you a lot more compared to social media, where social media is still yourself, but it's what you want them to see. With something like this as a podcast now, I feel like because of the comfortability we have, there's more of an authentic and genuine vibe that comes out that you yourself, we've said it sometimes in episodes where you don't realize you are talking and saying some things. Then people will come to you, that thing you said, and they'll quote every word that you're like, ah. Yeah. You, I don't remember saying that too, but it, they'll it, say, no, you said it in this part. Yeah, no, you don't remember. And it's I like, agree. ah, fair. Okay, so we're doing something right. So that's how I say it's increased confidence. So. Okay, so, and then now we'll just, let's just wrap it up. Let's talk about um, just, you know, what grooming and personal hygiene, cleanliness, looking good, smelling good, like, you know, what's, how is that like boosting confidence? If you like, don't be clean. When they insult you, eh, you'll oh know goodness. that hygiene is important oh for your confidence. Goodness. That's all I'll say. We said in the last episode, keep yourself clean. Girls like clean niggas. Yeah, you know, the funny thing is, I'm trying to think now about one hygiene one aspect of my hygiene that I may not have been taking care of in my teenage years that now I make sure it's such a thing. And I think one of... Showering. One of them... Twice a day. Well, yes, that's one. Keyword, twice. Not even just that. There's also brushing your teeth twice a day. Because, true, true. Because... True. Yeah, because... Again, people would neglect that. That night evening, one. And I, and I, I was to say that evening one. I'm, yeah. I'm 50 50. Some nights yeah, I do, some, some nights, nights yeah, I'm like, I'll, I'll, say that, I yeah, them, but I'll say that I do. Yeah, some nights do you some guys do them. Sometimes. You guys yes. do them. Yeah. And I think also making sure that, you know, you don't rewear your, especially like the clothes that you used to play sports. You wash as soon as you, you use sports, you wash. Some people will just, Okay, dry it and try and rewear it. No, you know nobody's happy that you're walking around with body odor going around. Because you, know, you can't it. smell it when you play. Like yep. some niggas, like, you've yeah. not washed your shit in weeks. Like what's and you're using now? the shorts. No, we no, can't no, no, smell no. it. I know we're all going to be sweating here, but bro, yeah, at least wash it one time now. Yeah. Like ah, and we know that acts is smell resistible, and you know it's it's, but it's not a cover up for no. Because some guys will do that thing. They're going to use the axe spray, spray, spray the whole spray, shorts. Yes, now, but now you I think can, eh, you can still the get, smell. It you can still sweat. Get, I mean, it does a lot of work, but you can still it's get sweat. You can all beat the yeah, smell of sweat, so, man. So no, just no. be hygienic. Like me, like when I used to play sports for uni and shit, yo, I would shower before practice and after. And the showering before was really to wake me up. It wasn't like a full scrub. I'll still use soap, yeah. but that one's wake up. But at least I know if I just sweat. Exactly. The smell will not be as bad. Then no, no, no. when I shower after again, peace of mind. Exactly. Some niggas will come up there just smelling in the morning. Yeah. And I think, again, you know, and this is obviously the last thing. Yeah, it's good to shower, like you said. You know, make sure you shower once, twice a day, once a day. At least take a shower. But it's also important to go the extra mile by using some sort of body spray. E.g. Axe. Now, the reason I say this is, even if you take a shower, your body is still going to sweat. You're still going to gather oils. These things come with their own smell, covered, you know, coupled with the heat we experience in Lagos. 
you're going to have some sort of odor. You want to be able to mask or you know catch that before it even happens prevent that before it even comes this is where you need to always use some sort of body spray you know we will recommend axe again you know last 48 hours minimum so you know use this so that apart from just having a shower you still have that extra freshness mm. that extra smell of there's nobody that hates a nice smell nobody there's nobody that hates that you smell nice everybody hates it nobody so, love it so. you know so yeah so i think and i think those are our tips for us today uh, and i would say if you want any more tips or want more uh, if you want any more tips or want any more advice follow the menisms pod we yep. will definitely have a lot of clips that mm-hmm. show this we would also have some more episodes talking about this and you can also follow us on our personal social media handles they're gonna put it down there yep. you know who we are but we appreciate you guys for tuning in for another episode as you see we back on a new season we have some more guests coming about we have some more announcements coming about so stay tuned with us ladies and gentlemen because this season is definitely one full of surprises so until next time, guys, I am Scenario on Deck. And I'm a Rogan And we will see you next time on Menisms. <laughs>